know that Elvis once shot a TV because uh, Robert Goulet was on? Apparently he wasn't a fan. So have you ever taken your Second Amendment right into action whenever Randy Orton popped up on your screen? <laughs> I don't have a problem with Randy Orton. I don't know what to... Well, Breed456 on Twitter wants to know where the heat with Orton come from. For all accounts, you two were tight. What went wrong? We were tight. We just, you know, I don't know. I, could, I dropped him on his head. You saw it plain as day, right? I dropped him on his head. I'd be pissed if you dropped me on my head. So. But in working together, can we really expect that there's never going to be an accident? That's, yeah. I, I, I've always said if you don't expect to get a boo-boo sometime in the ring, you're in the wrong fucking business. Right. Being a bit of a cunt, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. HBK's Lazy Eye would like to know, um, on May 25th, 2009, in a 10-man tag team match on Raw, you deliver a nasty little back superplex to Randy Orton, at which point visibly frustrated Orton uh, leans up and swings, uh, swings a right at you in anger. I gotta know what went down as soon as you hit the backstage after the match. Is Orton screaming in your ears? Michael Hayes creeping on a diva? Give us the scene. Michael Hayes was getting blowjob by somebody. I can't remember who it was, but that's right. all I remember when I got back to the curtain. Vince was texting somebody on his phone. Uh, Cole, how do you spell cunnilingus? <laughs> That's all I remember. <laughs> HBK's uh, Lazy Eye follows up with in a 2010 interview. You claimed Randy Orton managed to persuade John Cena to complain about your in-ring performance to Vince McMahon, which prompted your release. Could you go into detail about how this happened or perhaps divulge on how you know for sure that Orton persuaded Cena? No. So, go to Vince. No, it was just a process of elimination. Cena was hanging out in the locker room kind of just creeping and then I was talking to Randy and then I just got the sense that there were some things that were said during the day too before I went out for the match that you know prompted me that Cena was Cena knew more about mm. how the finish was going to go down then yeah why would Cena go along with that he was hot. he's untouchable he doesn't need to be bothered with that bullshit well there's a lot of people who you would think are untouchable Right? In the business who, yeah. for some reason, I mean, people always ask why, why does this person hold people down when they're, they're untouchable? But I don't know. Maybe that's how they stay untouchable. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, James DiPaolo, Facebook, was WWE justified in letting you go? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? The thing was, is I had, I, you know. Everybody can say that it was Randy Orton and John Cena and all mm -hmm. that stuff. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. I had come out publicly and said stuff about... I should have never opened my mouth about the Chris Benoit thing. Mm -hmm. And I think you get in that situation and you think that the world needs to know... The world needs to know what Ken Anderson feels about this particular topic. And it just... It's not true. And so I made some missteps. And then shortly thereafter, you know, I got popped for uh, being the... The 10 that went on ESPN as getting popped for, for getting steroids from, from that, uh, that, that company or whatever, the, mm -hmm. the wellness clinic. So, you know, there were misstep, there was misstep after misstep after misstep on my part. And then that was just the straw that broke the camel's back. And I think when those guys went to Vince, he was just like, you know what, I'm tired of hearing his name. Right. In a negative light, get, get rid of him. Gotcha. Plus, I had been hurt. I had been hurt a few times. Mm -hmm. which I didn't hurt myself, you know, <laughs> contrary to popular belief. Like, if somebody fucking hauls off and wails you in the leg with a baseball bat, that does not make you injury prone. Right. I'm just saying. Uh, Andy Barnett on Facebook. What's the funniest thing you've seen behind the curtains or on the road in any of the promotions or companies you've worked for? I'm sure you've seen your fair share of humans being stupid. If it comes to mind, bring it up. I could trim the segment out. I remember work. one time I was in the locker room. Everybody had left the building. And it was just Randy Orton and I in the locker room. And he was naked. And he had just come, come out of the shower or something. He's naked. And I'm, like, getting my shit ready. And my boots are sitting there. And I remember he kept, like, he kept, like, his, my boot is right here. And he kept, like, dipping his cock into my boot. And I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, me. I don't know what. He just... Dipping his balls in his cock into my boot. For no one else's edification. Nobody else's. He used to do shit like this. We'd be riding together. And he would just go like this. Just the two of us in the car. 
And I would say, Randy, um, there's nobody else in the car to find that funny. Right. It's just not, the 80s. You're still getting a push. He would just do it to pop himself. Wow. 